a soupy, sloppy Wednesday at Belmont Park as we kicked off the final Wednesday of this fall championship meet. Charging down to the finish line. Sunday will do it. Breeders' Cup 32 in the air. So no sloppy track blues on tonight's show. And here to brighten the day, not only is it Jason Blewett, we have Maggie Wolfenell from our third floor TV set. And just like that, Maggie, the last five cards are upon us. I know. Can you believe it, though? I haven't worked here since we've had a Bel uh, Belmont Breeders' Cup. So looking forward to it. And really, Jay, we've been very kind of lucky considering that we haven't had more rain than what we've had. So that's all right. We'll, we'll be drying out tomorrow. And at least the first half of the card, it seemed like we we fared better than those at Keeneland. My Twitter yeah. feed, and I'm sure yours, was a buzz earlier today <laughs> with Breeders' Cup doings. And the main news was American Pharaohs. We have a kiss, a good luck kiss, from owner breeder Ahmed Zayed, American Pharaoh's dad, as American Pharaoh AP gears up for that final career start. Does destiny await as he faces nine from post four Saturday in the $5 million classic? Yeah, he's coming off his uh, only second defeat of his career i'm um, going back to the travers but as we look at him here in the haskell this is probably the most impressive performance um i think here jay of his of his career thus far i mean don't get me wrong the triple crown races were amazing but he was so easily um done here in the haskell but yeah uh so a bit of a sloppy track a bit of a very wet morning um down there at keeneland so bob baffert just opting to walk the shed row with him and i don't think that's going to hurt him too much he's ready for battle yeah. if anyone's got him ready to go a mile and a quarter in what will be his last start to leave it all on the racetrack. It's trainer Bob Baffert. Surely. Good news coming out of the American Pharaoh camp, and we're glad he's in Kentucky safe and sound. We're also happy to hear that the queen of the West Coast, Beholder, is doing okay. They took some blood, and it sounds like everything is just perfect with her heading into her first BC Classic try. Yeah, to quote Richard Mandela, that, that blood work came back A-OK, -okay, and, uh, you know, sometimes they just get shipping fever, especially for that long kind of flight. Uh, so they that's nothing to be concerned about. And she, too, she just walked the shed row, staying inside, under tack this time around. But, I mean, she's become very acquainted with the racing service down there at Keeneland. So no worries on either end for um, your top two choices in the uh, Breeders' Cup Classic. And speaking of ends, she's on the outside. She'll cap that field of 10 at 535 when they break from the gate in Breeders' Cup Classic number 32. Second choice on the line is Beholder with Hall of Famer Gary Stevens at 3-1. to one. American Farrow, who it appears Maggie will enjoy that front-running pace advantage that he likes, is the 6-5 to five favorite. Yeah, and post four, you got to think is that absolutely perfect considering to his insider mostly horses who want to take back and kind of make one run so I think Beholder probably has the least advantageous post of any of them considering that she likes to be four relief race but it's only a field of 10 I don't mm -hmm. think she should too, she should have too much trouble and plus she does kind of like the stalk so I think it's it's an okay and fair post position for everybody and on a rainy Wednesday at Belmont Park and with Aqueduct just a week away well we had a new face in the jockey county in Sylvester D'Souza here he is gearing up for a ride of Board Viva Malala in the uh, second race, and uh, it's a rider that's put together a pretty impressive international resume. Yeah, that's that's very true. He's also very hard working. He's been out in the mornings as well here, Jay. A nice guy as well. I'm born in Brazil, I believe, and has spent most of his career in the UK, and then he would winter either in Dubai, Saudi Arabia, and he's even talked to him. He's, he's wintered some in India. But we're checking out his uh, 2014 World Cup uh, a get aboard African story here. And, yeah, I mean, this is his first time really riding in the States. Maybe he's going to have to adapt a little bit more of the state style. But he's a smart rider, and I think uh, he should have no problem getting off the mark here with uh, us, his agent, Seth Benzel. Yeah, Seth Benzel, good guy, former assistant to Todd Pletcher, worked for Bill Mott out on his own as a trainer, decided to take up the Sousa's book over the summer. They got the paperwork done regarding him coming to the U.S. And for any rider to be under contract for Godolphin Stable, that's good enough in my book, and we'll see what he does here. It'll be good to have a new rider, and a rider that I've been told is pretty aggressive and likes to ride speed, even on a European basis, with us over at Aqueduct on the inner track. Sloppy Maine through most of this Wednesday here, another day at Belmont. Maggie and I set to get to the gate with all of you. John Embriow, in fact, called the races. Larry Colm is done with Belmont until the uh, spring of 2016. Let's get it back with Johnny Ida. Race number two, our only turf race. We're on the Widener. Phillies and Mares. D'Souza's on the outside. Viva Malala, who broke poorly. And let's see what else happened as we send it up to Johnny Ida. 
three, rallies up the inside. Devious Matty, corner three, right together. Somersault just in behind, running in third. And Courage is a majority, is next in fourth. At the back, the uh, trio of uh, Viva Malela, Ak Naughty, who's in between horses, and uh, Desert Bliss, who broke on top but is now last. The quarter went in 24 seconds. It's corner three, who has a two-length lead over Courage is a majority. On the outside, Devious Matty races in third. Somersault is fourth, almost five lengths from the lead. Viva Malela down at the hedge. In between horses, Ak Naughty and Desert Bliss is seventh. All chasing corner three, who has the lead as they go into the far turn. The half was running 47 and three-fifth seconds over the good turf. Courage is a majority. Devious Matty, they're right together, second and third. Somersault is on the extreme outside. Ak Naughty. Begins to pick it up now from fifth. Ak Naughty will make her move to the outside. Viva Malala is down at the inside. And the field turns for home. And it is corner three. Ak Naughty extreme outside. Courage is a majority is there. Then Devious Matty in fourth as they come down for the 16th pole. Corner three holding on to the lead. Ak Naughty will be second best. Corner three, the winner. Then Act Naughty, followed by Courage is a Majority and Devious Matty. Uncoupled stablemates, one, two for leading trainer Chad Brown. And Maggie, it really was a case and a tale of different trips in which corner three had the tactical advantage on the lead and a slow pace on the widener. Yeah, exactly. And we see Act Naughty just not getting away maybe as alertly as she should have been and having to track outside, whereas corner three just sat that rail trip and took them gate to wire with Javier Castellano board, who had one heck of a day himself, as we'll find out as we watch more races. Yeah, not a bad. It was not a uh, one win Wednesday for Javier, no. who's set to go with honor code for Shug McGahee in the uh, 32nd Breeders' Cup Classic. And Chad Brown, of course, not here. Cherie DeVoe does a good job, a great job, in fact, with the New York string. Did the uh, saddling duties with corner three and act naughty. As we get it on to race number four, Wednesday's pick six in the mud began with a group of two-year-old maidens. This looked like a uh, potentially loaded race with a couple key second-time starters. Take it away, Johnny I. Lubsen and Gold Shark strike out for the lead. Midnight Surfers running in third. Mo for the money in fourth. Abolitionist on the outside in fifth. Seymour Dini now gains ground towards the rail from sixth. Luminary Flight is seventh. Then it's Basic Hero next in eighth, followed by Liz Kalon and Tabadol. Gold Shark in front here by a head. Lipsen now draws right alongside after a quarter in 22 and three fifth seconds in the mud. Mo for the money's on the outside in third. Just in behind is Seymour Dini, who's racing in fourth, followed by Midnight Surfer in fifth, and Basic Hero on the extreme outside, sixth. It's four lengths back to a Luminary Flight and Abolitionist. The field comes for the top of the stretch. And here is Mo for the money, who's taken over the lead. Mo for the money in front. Seymour Dini just in behind in second and is all out going after Mo for the money. Mo for the money. Seymour Dini continues to drive as Mo for the money drifts out. Mo for the money and Seymour Dini. They're one two as they come down for the wire. Mo for the money gets to the wire first. Seymour Dini was second. Basic hero finished third. Hold all tickets, a jock's objection, a steward's inquiry, and in the end, the uh, stewards left it alone with the six Mo for the money, who you can see the drift right here uh, outside, or with the four Seymour Dini outside Mo for the money. Yeah, I think just a case of being a bit green and, and a little bit wet, like weary as well, because Javier Castellano uh, trying to do everything to keep him straight with uh, that right-handed urging. And, you know, Jay, the, the two second-time starters in here, Seymour Dini and Luminary Flight, who, by the way, just did not show show up at all um, in his second start. They look to be the ones beat, but most of the money, relatively speaking, took a good bit of money in the face of the two of them. them. And uh, Uncle Mo, who, Tony Detro, I mean, looking at him in the paddock, he was more fit looking than those second time starters. I mean, he was just so ready for his debut. And Tony Dutcher on hand to saddle Javier aboard, another two-year-old winner for Uncle Mo, as we look for Noah's Ark on the other side of the break at Belmont.
Now you can enjoy your favorite pro and fantasy football teams while playing the races in style as Long Shots welcomes back NFL Sunday Ticket. With over 400 HD TVs, 270 individual carols, a full-service sports bar and food menu, Long Shots is the place to catch all the great racing and football action. So come on out, bring your friends, bring your league to Long Shots, located on the second floor at Aqueduct. And here it is. The 37 year wait is over. American Pharaoh is finally the one. American Pharaoh has won the triple crown. That still inspires goosebumps when you consider the uh, season with the Triple Crown score that American Farrow earned. We have that deposit $125 match bonus for new members over at the new look, Naira.com. Only jockeys get closer to the action, and of course the Zayats, and they're already at Keeneland. Justin and Ahmed were busy on Twitter today filling us in with the American Farrow's Wednesday morning uh, regimen. <laughs> but they have got Zayat Stables, uh, El Kabir running here Saturday, Breeders' Cup Day. Yeah, good to see him on the Comeback trail and his exercise rider Simon Harris. No, no shyness from him of sharing his opinion, but he's very thrilled with him coming back, and his work show that as well. And I think he's turned into a more mature, stronger individual. So pleased to see him back. I think they picked the right kind of spot um, to bring him back into. Right, the bold ruler, yeah. one of six entered in the bold ruler, including Vijack, who will get to his effort. He was uh, basically cross entered today, and he ran today in the eighth, and they've got him entered back in the bold ruler. More on that in a few seconds. Let's get on to the Phillies and Mares, a big field as we go back to Johnny I. You lie away well from the rail. Sacred success from mid-pack and on the outside, it's full of sugar. Then it's Sister Margaret who's racing in fourth. True Romance next in fifth. Know-it-all Anna is sixth. Mela in seventh. Skip a loot runs in eighth. At the back are Boblet and Mrs. Hudson. Into the far turn. You lie by ahead. Sacred success right alongside. The two long shots are one, two. And uh, full of sugar is racing in third. Then it's Sister Margaret. True romance down at the rail. Know it all. Anna is sixth, but just three and a half lengths from the lead. Farther back, it's uh, Mela and Boblet. The quarter in 21 and 3 in the slop. They're at the top of the stretch now. And the half was run in 45 seconds. There's sacred success and full of sugar. Sister Margaret on the outside is a know-it-all Anna and Mela out in the middle of the track inside the 16th pole. It is Mela on the outside. Mela in a photo here with know-it-all Anna. Mela wins it. Know-it-all Anna second, then full of sugar and... Mela, widest of all, basically uh, grabbing a uh, hot dog and a soda <laughs> off the uh, grandstand apron, but she was up in time beneath a hustling Kendrick Carmouche. Yeah, good to see Kendrick back in the winner's circle, that's for sure. First day back riding. I have to have the utmost confidence after his day uh, here uh, on this Wednesday. But Mela, finally, I've been a fan of hers ever since she uh, made her New York debut four starts ago. And yeah, you liked her that finally day. Finally got it done mm -hmm. in the slop, as you said, about 10 wide. And just a quick um, nod to, to Linda with Know It All and uh, Anna. One of the most shrewd claims, I mean, besides Palace and Kid Cruz, uh, that I've seen her make as of recently. And I think this is a filly that she's going to keep improving. All right, let's see how Know It All Anna does. Maybe moving to the big A. And Brett Calhoun, by the way, the winning trainer of mm -hmm. Mela. And speaking of Kid Cruz with Linda Rice, Vijack and the uh, the slop loving Mexicoma, we had those three and a few others squaring off in the Wednesday feature. In second and is moving up on the inside. Mexicoma and North Slope heads apart third and fourth and a break of almost four lengths. Back to uh, Vijack and Kid Cruz is the early trailer as they head up this sloppy backstretch. Anchor down the gray at the rail, pokes ahead in front of Storm and Monarco. The opening quarter mile, 22 and two-fifth seconds. Mexicoma sits right behind in third. 
Then it's North Slope in fourth, a break of three to uh, Vijack, and uh, Kid Cruz continues to trail. Into the far turn, anchor down narrowly over Stormin Monarco with Mexicoma still tracking in third. Mexicoma's about three and a half from the front. The half went in 45 and three. North Slope is fourth. Kid Cruz begins to pick it up down at the rail. Kid Cruz with a quick move there. And Kid Cruz is now up to fourth, three lengths from the lead. Stormin Monarco anchored down. There's still one, two, but here comes Mexicoma. Vijack is making a wide move. Kid Cruz is down at the rail. North slope is the trailer and the field turns for home and here comes kid cruz up the inside storm and monarco hanging in there storm and monarco kid cruz mexicoma on the outside it is storm and monarco with the lead over kid cruz storm and monarco is gonna pull off the upset here storm in monarco storms home at 14 to 1 and it's another win for javier castellano Kid Cruz was second. And, and there was your spoiler alert earlier in the show with Maggie. Javier did have a big day. Got the hat trick and, and won the uh, featured eighth in style and did it not at $3, but at 30 bucks for David Jacobson. I mean, yeah, when you look at the connections, it's kind of surprising to see that $30 win ticket payoff. Uh, a horse that you had to dig through his PPs, Jay, to really make a case for him. But kudos to Time For it. Time for him, U.S. is David Aragona, who did select this horse. Yeah, so. picked him on top yeah. in the post parade program. David's picks, and he is now the replacement of Mike Beer, who went back to the form. His picks are on Naira.com as well. Time for him, U.S. Check that out. Good job, David. And mm -hmm. Son of Anarcos turned it around, picked a uh, an opportunistic time at a big price, and might have been the pick six killer in the sequence. We'll find out. We'll see if any other bombs won today as we go back to Johnny I for the calls of one, three, five, six, and nine. It's a rice and beans far outside. It's Naughty Grace along with Mamie Riley, the half mile and 46 and three as they come down for the eighth pole. She's Gifted is down at the rail. She's Gifted a narrow lead. Here's Whimsy's Girl now moving up and Mamie Riley on the outside. So it's Whimsy's Girl and Mamie Riley and Mamie Riley takes over and Mamie Riley is 72 to one. High noon cocktail. The field comes into the stretch. The half in 46 and one fifth seconds. Here's Big Band Benny on the outside of My Man Al. My Man Al narrowly. Big Band Benny. Tau is each trying to squeeze through down at the rail. It's My Man Al holding on to the lead. Then Tau is each and Big Band Benny. And text me, My Man Al, the winner. Tau is each was second and then a photo for third. 110 and 3, a less than a quarter of a mile to the finish, and it is Unstoppable You holding on to the lead here. Unstoppable You is in front with Mississippi Duel now drawing right alongside Mississippi Duel and Unstoppable You. Mississippi Duel pokes ahead in front, then it's Unstoppable You. Divine Child now moves to third. Mississippi Duel, Unstoppable You. It's going to be a head bob too close to call. Mississippi Duel on the outside, and Unstoppable You on the inside. Take cover. They are heads apart for the lead as they come into the stretch. Danny's Deceiver on the outside takes the lead now from Take Cover. Banker's Holiday is third. And farther back, it's Bokelia Island and Thirst for Glory. Danny's Deceiver squirts away now to lead by four lengths. Danny's Deceiver on to victory here. Here's a winning favorite at two to one, Danny's Deceiver. Banker's Holiday was second. Then take cover, Thirst for Glory, and Bokelia Island. Rail in fourth. Farther back, it's a Pink Freud Live. And your turn with Little Miss Julia. Half mile in 46 seconds, and the field is in the stretch. And it is Majestic Bloom trying to hold off by light of day. And Laura's Patriot Extreme outside. Here comes your turn. But Majestic Bloom is still there. Majestic Bloom now by almost three. And the even money favorite will get the job done in the rain, in the slop, in the finale. Majestic Bloom, then by light of day. 15,000, the pick six carry over into that last Thursday card as uh, Storm and Monarco turned out to be the pick six killer. Nobody was alive going into the last one by George Weaver and John Velasquez. The closest 
finish. The tightest one on the day, though, belong to race number five, and that'll be Maggie and I's second look. Thank you very much, Taffy. Little slop fest as they roll home, and these cheap bottom of acclaimers running for 12-5 tags really put on a good show. I literally thought this was a heater, even after I saw the photo, because Mississippi Duels, uh, the eventual winner here's nose is so dark that you can't decipher yeah. <laughs> um, where the line is and where his nose ends and starts. So, um, But this is what got Kendrick rolling on his own natural pick three here. And uh, just edging out Mike Luzzi and Unstoppable You here for Dave Canizzo, who had been win the next race uh but uh yeah it was a, it was a good show between those two that's for sure and danny gargan off a 17 month layoff with mississippi duel capped a uh, pick five that paid 189,000 for two bucks i think somebody hit it for 50 cents we were so close to having a pick five carryover into thursday's card and on the rider front we had three jocks win eight races today three for kendrick three for javier and eric Consell won a pair and it was up to johnny b the hall of famer to get it done in the last it even money on the trainer front chad brown walked away with another victory he's got 33 we may have to i think i'm going to do it tonight look up the belmont fall record yeah because he's got to be closing close. into record territory other than that nine different trainers want to race today and as we come down to it and i told mig maggie the other night i said if sheikh muhammad wins the owner's title he is responsible for getting the sheikh on the phone when we get to aqueduct i want a phone interview with sheikh muhammad we will get that done to you right do here that. he said i think that'll be a tall okay. order, but we'll leave it up to the big. <laughs> and we did have three claims of Rudy Rodriguez jumping in and taking Majestic Bloom on the drop in the last for 25K. The two prior claims did not run well in the mud and slop. And on Monday, Cosmic won. Little Bernardini Zenyana stretching his legs for John Sheriff's Maggie. Yeah, hopefully he makes it back to the races soon. All right, we'll be back. Don't worry on this Wednesday edition of Belmont Insider. John Velasquez is riding tonalist to another win in the Jockey Club Gold Cup. And the last two Belmont Stakes winners ready to see battle in American Pharaoh and Tonalist. Hopefully uh, Tonalist shows up with his usual good effort uh, for trainer Christoph Kamant. And this is the place to be to watch Breeders' Cup 32, Belmont Park on Friday and Saturday. An earlier post, 11.45 a.m., activities for the entire family. And that Belmont Thermos giveaway that will serve you well with the move over to the Big A next Wednesday. Here's a little Race 6 preview on what will likely be a wet Thursday, Maggie. Matt King calls up first off a good effort. Well, I don't think the wet track will hinder Matt King Cole's chances here. Uh, Jay, this is one of the fastest fire speed figures uh, of a horse in defeat that I've seen this season from a two-year-old earning a 93 last time out. Like I said, he'll get a wet track here again and I think we're going to see it. I mean, it could be possible when this race shows up in the Remsen. Yeah, I don't disagree, including portfolio manager who's closing for second first time out. Yeah, and had a tall order while finishing third last time out in the champagne i think this is a talented horse that is only going to improve with the more distance he gets to an easy route for us breeders cup saturday dominic Shatino and the juvenile with greenpoint crusader dominic's already in kentucky spoke with them via text monday to wish him a good luck but his assistant will be on hand here tomorrow with it's all relevant and this mare they paid up for this horse 360 as a yearling but this mare has been pretty solid uh, she was solid herself as well tish shady ap indian uh, and Knievel, just to name a few from her, including It's All Relevant, who's been running on the turf. And to me, he didn't look like a turf horse necessarily. A son of hard spun here. Dominic Satino, for what it's worth, small sample, but two-year-old's main special weight turf to dirt. He's three for 12 with a 322 ROI. So I also like that ankle. I think It's All Relevant could have a 
good impact. And that stat right. could be relevant as we talk about top mares, Noble Fire. She's got La Verdad yeah. in the BC Philly Mare Sprint. She's got Hot City Girl in the eighth off this romping win in the CT Oaks. And Jay, she looks to control here as she's at the speed from the rail. You got to go with her. Jose Ortiz uh, up here once again. I think this is a Philly who's just rounding into form here. Then again, maybe she liked two turns. And David Jacobson. <laughs> well, I think that race was three turns going two, seven, eight. Two. So it's Trust only me, two. Many a night at Charlestown, I thought it was five. You'll have to take me the next time you guys run a horse down there at CT. Here's uh, Jubal and Vision, uh, who's been pretty good out of town for Jacobson. Yeah, she was beating up against Lesser in her last couple. But, Jay, before that, it wasn't like she was running with slouches by any stretch of the word. So I think this filly, she, she plays a good stalking role from the outside. And if she can kind of bring that outside uh, out of town for him here to New York again she's competitive the mosses and John sheriffs are very much present the second half of the show we looked at that breeze Monday a cosmic one and here's Katie's garden who's been a bit of an in and outer but her a game makes her a major threat and Jay as you said also present for the second uh, half of this Belmont season is John sheriffs who this Philly is basically second off of a layoff here and could have just needed that last race I thought so in the past and maybe she's able to get back to her good form because she was good, especially winning that race there last year at Saratoga. And we end the show in good form as we send it to Andy for Thursday's play. Well, thanks a lot. Looking at Thursday's card and considering the weather here, turf racing, a little iffy to say the least. So we'll look towards the dirt races, and there are six scheduled dirt races on Thursday's card. Now, the first race, an interesting group of two-year-old maidens going a mile. And as Jason and I have previously discussed, neither one of us is that thrill with the horse who may be favored, the three-caster for, for trainer Todd Pletcher. In fact, of the two Todd Pletchers, I would prefer the one, Majestic Confection, who came up a dead rail, or a rail that was certainly off in its debut. But the four Queen Caroline interests me a great deal. This horse got absolutely bombed at the windows and was running in a race where tap two had won the race. A horse who's a contender in this weekend's Breeders' Cup Juvenile Philly second the spinaway in a subsequent start who was getting bet. The second horse was a Chad Brown horse. There was another horse taking money in that race and Queen Caroline was getting absolutely pounded. Now she didn't break well. She was left a few lengths. She made a small move and then she completely flattened out but I don't care. That money to me had to be meaningful. Queen Caroline doesn't figure to be a short price in this race and I'm going to guess they were betting for a reason that Saratoga would give her one more chance to show that that money was well meant as we go back to Jason and Maggie. One mile for Mike Matz in our jocks room, our silks room, in fact, as lush as the fall foliage off the backstretch at Belmont Park. 12.55 for the Thursday opener and a pick six carryover. Same time, same place tomorrow with Maggie and I. Have a good night.